The day of Arafah is one of the most sacred days in Islam. It is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed the religion of Islam and bestowed the Muslim Ummah with divine favor. Allah said, This day I have perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. On this day, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bore witness three times for Allah and the Muslim Ummah that he has succeeded in conveying his mission when he said, O oh Allah, be my witness that I have conveyed your message to your people. O oh Allah, be my witness that I have conveyed your message to your people. O oh Allah, be my witness that I have conveyed your message to your people. It marks the place of reunion on earth for Adam and Eve. They met up, Arafah, at a lone mountain in a vast plain. Thus, it and its surrounding plain became known as the Mount of Arafah. The day of Arafah is connected to the story of Prophet Ibrahim salam. It is believed that Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail were instructed by Allah to build the Kaaba. Bear in mind that this is still in the middle of the desert in the city of Mecca is still extremely small. Yet, once again, in sheer obedience to Allah, Ibrahim fulfills and calls the people and proclaim to the people the Hajj, pilgrimage. They will come to you on foot and on every lean camel. They will come from every distant pass. On the days of Hajj, the Prophet wasallam said, Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. The Prophet ﷺ said, On no other days does the Satan feel so belittled, humiliated, and angry as he does on the day of Arafah. The reason for this is the mercy of Allah that descends this day and the forgiveness that He grants to people for major sins. Jabir reported, that the Prophet ﷺ said, The ten days of the month of Dhul Hijjah are the best days in the sight of Allah. A man asked, Are these days better than an equivalent number of days that are spent fighting for the cause of Allah? The Prophet answered, They are better than an equivalent number of days spent in the cause of Allah. And there is no day better in the sight of Allah than the day of Arafah. On this day, Allah, the Almighty, and the Exalted One descends to the nearest heaven, and He is proud of His slaves on the earth, and says to those in heaven, Look at my servants. They have come from far and near, with hair disheveled and faces covered with dust. They seek my mercy, even though they have not seen my chastisement. Far more people are freed from the hellfire on the day of Arafah than on any other day. But for those of us whom Allah hasn't planned Hajj this year, how can we reap the benefits of this blessed month, these blessed 10 days, and most importantly, the Arafah day? 1. Fast. According to a hadith, one who fasts sincerely on the day of Arafah will receive forgiveness of their sins for the previous and following year. Abu Qatada radiallahu an narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about fasting on the day of Arafah. He said, it expiates for the sins of the previous year and of the coming year. Avoiding food, drink, useless activities, and focusing on your relationship with your Rabb for at least one day seems like an extremely good bargain in return for two years of forgiveness. But one crucial aspect to keep in mind is to not ritualize any act of worship. Make sure that you keep your full intention to please Allah and educate yourself of the significance of this action and not just to continue any ongoing tradition. Two, 
make dhikr, remembrance of Allah. On this blessed day, any act of worship you do will result in more good deeds. So step up your remembrance of Allah, which you can do at any time of the day. During virtually any activity, repeat the specific dhikr, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al-Azim, meaning glory be to Allah, and all praise is due to Him. And in a hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, the best dua on the day of Arafah, and the best dua which I and the Anbiya before me have recited, is La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. There is no deity except Allah alone, without partner, to him belongs all that exists, and to him belongs all praise, and he is powerful over everything. 3. Recite, study, listen to the Qur'an. Not one day should go by that we forget about the Qur'an. And especially on this day, we should at least make an effort to open the book and drink up some wisdom. If every good deed is multiplied, then just imagine how many good deeds you're getting by just making an intention to listen to the words of your Rabb. 4. Be a people person. You don't need to embark on humanitarian mission. Just visit your neighbor and ask how they're doing. Bake a pie for them. Or better yet, invite them over for iftar. If you have the energy while fasting, check out local volunteer opportunities that aren't physically draining. Don't forget those at home. Spend time with your family. Have productive discussions. Share something new that you learned. Teach the youngsters and listen to what they have to say. If you have called a specific relative in many days, make a short five-minute call. Don't make it long and end up wasting your time in theirs. Keep it sweet and simple. Ask how they're doing and share something beneficial. The possibilities are quite endless. Be creative and just keep the intention of pleasing Allah in your mind. But the Hajj is undeniably the greatest act of worship that is done on the days of Dhul Hijjah, especially on the day of Arafah. As the Prophet wasallam said, Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. Hajj is Arafah. A journey of sacrifice, self-discovery, and above all, a journey of servitude and obedience to Allah Almighty. And in case you're wondering where it all began, it all begins in the time of the Prophet Ibrahim. In his older years, Ibrahim السلام, was commanded by Allah to take his wife Hajar and his newborn son Ismail to live in the barren desert plains of Mecca, a land which was by all means inhospitable, only to leave them with nothing more than some dates and flask of water. As Ibrahim begins to leave, his wife Hajar emotionally cries out, To where are you going? To whom will you leave us? She frantically repeats this again and again until she asks, Has Allah commanded you to do this? To which Ibrahim replies, Yes. Being a noble woman of Allah, she replies, If that is the case, then Allah will not let us down. Shortly after their dates and water are used up, Hajar began to search for help. She leaves her baby behind and proceeds to ascend the mountain of Safa. She looks far and wide, but to her disappointment, sees no one in sight. She races back down to check on her child and then continues her search, this time ascending the mountain of Marwa. She traverses back and forth between the mountains of Safa and Marwa until one narration states that Angel Jibril descends and with the tip of his wing hits the ground and out sprouts the well of Zamzam, with water being the source of life. This event served as the beginning of what was to become the city of Mecca. This miraculous event is encapsulated in the Sa'i, or running between Safa and Marwa, that Muslims perform in the days of Hajj. A few years later, Ibrahim returned to reunite with his beloved wife and son Ismail. Shortly after his arrival, Ibrahim witnessed a dream whereby Allah revealed to him that he was to sacrifice his son. Of course, this is an extreme test and a trying one. 
Yet both Ibrahim and his son Ismail comply willingly. Ibrahim takes his son up to a mountain and places his son blindfolded on a rock. Yet, just as Ibrahim was about to make the sacrifice, Allah commands the knife not to cut and explains to Ibrahim that he has passed the test. A sheep is brought in exchange for the sacrifice and this would then go on to form the basis of the sacrificial animal sacrifice Muslims perform at the end of Hajj. A few years pass and once Ismail reaches his youth, Allah commands Ibrahim alongside his son to build the Kaaba, the house of Allah on earth. Upon the completion of this monumental task, Allah commands Ibrahim to call the people to perform the pilgrimage of Hajj. Bear in mind that this is still in the middle of the desert and the city of Mecca is still extremely small. Yet once again, the sheer obedience to Allah, Ibrahim fulfills and calls the people and proclaim to the people the Hajj. They will come to you on foot and on every lean camel. They will come from every distant pass. Today, that very call has been answered and the fruits of Ibrahim's sincerity and obedience to Allah can be seen in full effect. Every year, millions upon millions of people travel from all corners of the world to visit the house of Allah, to walk in the footsteps of Ibrahim. Yet the story doesn't end there. For it is while Ibrahim is on his own pilgrimage that he is approached by Satan. Satan, being the open sworn enemy of humanity, tries to corrupt his pilgrimage. However, in defiance to Satan, Ibrahim pelts him with stones and overcome him. This event has been embodied in the Rami or the pelting opponent of Hajj, whereby Muslims symbolically cast away Satan by pelting these same areas with stones. These important key events in the life of Ibrahim went on to become the manasik or rituals of Hajj. In one way or another, we can see that Hajj in fact is a celebration of the life of Ibrahim and an embodiment of his path. Allah commands the believers in the Quran in more than one occasion to follow the faith of Ibrahim, the upright. For those doing Hajj, the day of Arafah is considered the most important day of the entire Hajj pilgrimage. In fact, the Prophet wasallam said, Hajj is Arafah. It is important that if one misses Arafah, their Hajj is not complete or valid. On this day, all the pilgrims, women, man, old, young, rich or poor, of every race, color and nationality, journey to the desert plains of Arafah. They begin the journey from Mina after the dawn prayers and they remain until sunset. And they make their way, they will continuously recite the Talbiyah, Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. The powerful meaning of those words are, here I am, in your service, O oh Allah, here I am. Here I am, you have no partner, here I am. Verily all praise and blessings are yours, and all sovereignty, you have no partner. The Talbiyah captures the purpose of the whole journey, to serve Allah and worship Him and Him alone. The day is spent praying and making dua to Allah. All the Hujjaj are gathered in one place, with the same goal. The entire plain is filled with worshippers dressed in their simple white cloth. It is a day of deep reflection and connection with Allah. Allah says in the Quran, Then when you pour down from Arafah, celebrate the praises of Allah at the sacred monument and celebrate His praises as He has directed you, even though before this you went astray. The verse shows that no one is exempt from Allah's mercy on this day. Allah's forgiveness is for everyone who seeks it. It is a profound and humbling experience for all those who witness Arafah on Hajj. Even more poignant is the fact that this is the place where all humanity 
will be gathered for the start of the Day of Judgment. When the pilgrims stand before Allah on Yawm Al-Arafah, they inevitably remember that the next time they return may well be on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, when there will no longer be an opportunity for Tawbah. There is no shade on the plains of Arafah. These days, there are some tents where people can shelter. But when you speak to elders who went on Hajj decades ago, they will tell you how difficult it was back then. They used to stand before Allah, seeking His mercy, disheveled in dust and in tears, under the burning heat of the desert sun. They report that it felt as if they were already experiencing Al Qiyamah. The type of struggles pilgrims faced back then may have changed now. But the significance of Arafah, the reconnection with Allah, has remained the same. The day is not only for those who go on pilgrimage. It is a special day for every Muslim. Even if they are in the furthest part of the globe, the Prophet ﷺ said the following. One, the best of dua is dua on the day of Arafah. Two, for those not on Hajj, fasting on the day of Arafah absolves the sins for two years, the previous year and the coming year. Three, there is no day in which Allah saves more people from the fire than the day of Arafah. Four, anyone who has an atom's weight of faith in their heart will be forgiven by Allah on this day, whether or not they actually stand at Arafah. We also remember that Arafah is the day when Allah revealed the following verse. Today, I have perfected your religion for you and have completed my blessings upon you and chosen Islam as deen, religion in a way of life for you. Just as Ramadan and its last 10 nights was honored with the first revelation of Quran, so Dhul Hijjah and its first 10 days were honored with the final ever revelation of Quran. The day of Arafah was the last time Angel Jibreel alayhi salam came to earth as a messenger to the prophets. Arafah was also the day and place where our beloved Prophet ﷺ delivered his farewell sermon on his last ever Hajj to crowds of hundreds and thousands of Muslims. It was a beautiful message, but also bittersweet. The fact that the Prophet ﷺ's remaining time on earth was short. O oh people, lend me an attentive ear, for I know not whether after this year I shall ever be amongst you again. Therefore, listen to what I am saying to you very carefully and take these words to those who could not be present here today. The Prophet's farewell also acts as a reminder that none of us knows how long we still have on this earth. Just as all the Hujjaj have to arrive at Arafah before it is too late, we too have to make the most of this day before the sun sets and make the most of our lives before it too slips away. The Prophet ﷺ ended his sermon by saying, All those who listen to me shall pass on my words to others and those to others again. And may the last ones understand my words better than those who listen to me directly. Be my witness. O oh Allah, that I have conveyed your message to your people. May we live up to the hope and trust that the Prophet ﷺ had in us and may Allah accept everyone's deeds and prayers on this day from the Hujjaj and from us. Ameen.